Good evening, welcome to Interesting Talks with Footprints Counselling Service. Today we're going to be talking about optimising our mental health. Optimising our mental health. In the UK this week is um, Mental Health Week. So hence I'm focusing on optimising our mental health. So to the business side, like, share, leave comments, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, hit the like button and it will notify you when my next video is due so you can watch it and keep up to date with what's going on. I shall also probably be sharing this on Facebook so if you're on Facebook you can go through Facebook into YouTube and subscribe. You can also leave comments on Facebook. Okay so there was a program that I saw the other night regarding anxiety which is a mental health disorder. And it was featuring um, a TV chef called Nadia Hussein. And she revealed some stuff in that that I found really, really breathtaking, moving. And of course, being a counsellor, I, I found it very, very, I wouldn't say entertaining, but um, thought provoking, shall we say. Now, before we, I get to narrate her story to you. Let me explain something about mental health. Now, when people say mental health, they think negative. The person's got issues. No. Mental health is on this side good, this side poor. In a day, somebody will fluctuate to the good. Something could happen and they fluctuate to the poor. It moves constantly. Women that have a lot of biological um, issues or things that happen within their body, they fluctuate more than men do probably. But it is not a constant. So your mental state moves. Mental health is not bad health. It's like saying somebody, your physical health. You don't automatically, when somebody says to you physical health, you don't automatically think that they're not healthy. You just think physical health, where is their physical health? Let's get that misconception out there. So back to Nadia. Nadia said that she suffers from anxiety. And of course, we all suffer from anxiety at different times. But when it becomes a problem is when it's overbearing and you're anxious for no reason. For example, if you're going to take an exam, there's gonna be a level of anxiety. If you've taken your driving test, I. I know there's a level of anxiety attached to it. But when anxiety is constant and it's what comes into your life a lot for no reason, then that's when it becomes a problem. So a quick synopsis of what I saw with Nadia. She went to see a CBT therapist, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy. It's something I do. I use CBT, I use person-centered and psychodynamic. But she went to see a CBT therapist. And he said to her, when was the first time that you was aware of being anxious, suffering from anxiety? And she said it was as long as she could remember. As long as she could remember. So he said, okay, when was the first time that you actually can actually specifically remember it? Whereupon she said, back at school. He asked her what happened at school. She said she was bullied. She, he said, what form did the bullying take? Well, apparently kids in her school were pulling out chunks of her hair, so much so that her skull was bleeding. They was also slamming her fingers in the doors, so much so that her fingernails dropped out. They also flushed her head down the toilet and held it down the toilet, and she thought she was actually gonna suffocate or drown in the toilet. This was when her anxiety started. Now, what was amazing to me was that she was a, she's a grown adult and she was unable to connect the dots, as in early trauma leads to mental disorders in later life. Early trauma in your early childhood, whatever it might have been, it doesn't have to be as severe as what she had, led her to becoming a totally anxious person in her adulthood, which obviously steals the light from your life. So if you do have anxiety, phobias, any kind of stuff that you 
are aware of or not aware of or other people who might have mentioned it to you, go and see a therapist. Try to work it, work through it because we have one life and there's no time to be wasting it when you're not at your full capacity. You will not be at your full capacity if you've got things that affected you in your childhood that were afflicting you in your adulthood. And you know, you can you can deal with them. They're they're not they're they're not like physical deformities that can't be fixed. They're mental deformities. And I suppose also because they're mental deformities, people don't see them. Outsiders don't see them. The individual feels it. But um we think that we can just cope. Well, why cope when you can live? Anyway, so here's some of my ideas of keeping an optimum level of mental health. Get moving. Any kind of exercise, walking through a park is a good idea, going to the gym, playing volleyball, playing football, netball, any kind of activity, kickboxing. What happens is you get serotonin going into your brain, feel good factor, endorphins going through your brain, feel good factor. Obviously, the next thing is you'll be healthier. And also, when challenges come your way or you feel stressed in any way, the fact that you've done some form of exercise helps you cope with it. It's just real. It just happens. Just do it, believe me. Watch your weight. If you get overweight and you're, you will likely to you know, suffer from higher blood pressure, again, it's going to affect your mental health. Be careful what you consume. I mean, coffee, alcohol, tobacco, these things stir up your system in a way that you become more anxious, more stressful, more uptight. I drink coffee, but I don't drink it all the time, and I'm aware of what I drink and how much I drink of it. And again, if I do drink too much, then I do feel a little bit, my system is ticking over quicker than what I want it to do. Another tip, stay in the moment. Try not to run away from uncomfortable situations. I mean, fair enough, we find uncomfortable situations and we want to run away physically or we want to run away mentally. If we do confront these situations and deal with them, then they've gone. So the next challenge that comes your way, that day, that week, that month, you've not got that one lingering, that you left it. They're sivering away and didn't do anything about it. Also, a good way to talk to yourself is to keep a journal. If you keep a journal, write down things that might have stressed you out, things that you're not happy with, uh, complex experiences. It gives you an opportunity to process it, to look at it the next day, for example, and say, oh, on Tuesday, I felt like this. I'm not quite sure why I felt like it, or you do know why you felt like it. But if you keep a journal, it's something to look back on, and it allows you to get mental distance from your experiences. Next tip, stay socially connected. Stay socially connected with friends and family that you get on with, people that inspire you, people that bring you along, bring the best out of you, make you laugh, give you thought-provoking situations for you to improve and better your life, or somebody who's just gonna listen to you, and also give it back to them too, because it's not a one-way street. Get all your small jobs done. Now to me, getting all your small jobs done, I mean, like getting ironing done if you need to do iron. If you've got to get MOT, get your MOT done. If you've got to um, you know, pay some bills, because I find if you let all of these things go and by the end of the week you've got 20 small jobs in your to-do box that you've not done and a challenge comes along, that challenge that you've got to deal with here and now um, is magnified because you've got so many other things running about in your head. Yeah? So it's not rocket science, but of course we forget to do it. Hence, that's why I'm making videos like this, to remind us of the little things that we can do to help ourselves stay on top of our game. Sleep. Wow. Now, if you don't sleep well, you can't rest. You can't digest your thoughts. You can't rejuvenate your brain. Some people tell me that they get along with five hours of sleep a night. Well, I think you're just heading for some kind of mental strain or some kind of ill health in mentality and probably physically as well because your body needs sleep to rejuvenate itself. And also with problems, something that makes you angry or frustrated, if you sleep on it the next day, it might be, become more, cl more clear for you, more clarity might be available for you to make a better decision on that, what you was going through. And last but not least, something that I suppose a lot of us neglect, 
drink water, plenty of it, enough of it, because water allows your body to function. In fact, 70% of your body is water. 80% of your brain components are made of water. So if you don't drink enough water, these things don't work. They don't work, you don't work. Your brain is gonna suffer and your mental health will suffer. So you'll be moving to the poor mental health instead of the good mental health. This is something that you have control over. So, if you like this video, like it, share it, leave comments um, on Facebook or on YouTube, share it with friends that you feel that might benefit from just my straightforward talking on this subject of mental health. So until next time, take care of yourself, do your best to stay positive, and tune into my next video.